Investment in critical sectors of any economy is very important as it enhances a country's economic development. It is the main source of employment creation and the main factor of economic growth. Globally, investments induces the economic prosperity of a people and welfare improvements in general. Economic development module, which places high premium on infrastructural development as a yardstick to attracting investors, has worked for so many industrialized countries, including the famous Asia Tigers of China, Singapore and others. Today, those countries have become a model for many developing countries as a result of the huge receipts private sector involvement has contributed to the economic growth and development of their environment. The case of China is quite intriguing. Once referred to as a sleeping giant by renowned French statesman and military ruler Napoleon Bonaparte, China, through a well-disciplined national economic agenda, took steps to invest in first-class infrastructures such as agriculture, housing and manufacturing. Today, China is the second biggest economy in the world. If you look at China, Singapore, 40, 50 years ago, including uh, South Korea, in terms of their economy and in terms of the infrastructure they had, were definitely not at the level they are at now. These countries decided that a market-driven economy was more likely to bring in development. Nigeria, which shares similarity with China in terms of population and manpower development, has not been that successful in her bid to make the country an investment haven. Several years after independence, Nigeria's economy is still largely crude oil dependent and a bloated civil service structure which leaves little for investments in key infrastructure which would have served as an enabler for the private sector to flourish. I see Nigerians who are abroad and I tell them there's no better place like home. Forget about what people tell you. Nigeria is the right place to invest. Nigeria is a place to grow the economy. A country of 180 million people is a country of huge potentials. And those who are going to reap the benefit are those who plug into it now. The hunger to entrench global best practice and place Delta State South South Nigeria on the path of sustainable growth and development has led Governor Ifanyo Koa in the last three years to carry out economic reforms. The different transformative steps have begun to yield results as the state is now an investment hub. Delta State is now an investment destination in the sense that most investors from other China, Singapore, US, Europe, South Africa are daily making inquiries about the type of investment that can engage in, in data state because of the information we have given to them. So looking at the entire space today, we can say we are lucky the state has grown and is developing. In streamlining the ease of doing business, which is a central factor in attracting foreign and local investors into the state, Governor Ifan Yokoa, through the instrumentality of the Delta State Investment Development Agency, adopted the private-public partnership PPP model. Through this model, the Okoa-led administration has attracted high-impact private sector investments into the state. In the agricultural value chain, a quiet socio-economic revolution in oil palm plantation and processing is brewing in Akukwibu, Oshimili North local government area of the state. It's going to help the state in opening up and encouraging more people to go into agriculture. And it's going to help the state in terms of attracting more foreign investment because when an indigenous company does well, foreigners who want to invest will see that there's prospects for them and they would like to come and invest as well. We have had uh, quite uh, a string of successes with the private sector, especially in growing the economy and the interventions in the different facets of the economy. Just as in the agricultural sector, the resuscitation of the moribund Delta Steel Complex, which goes with a new name, Premium Steel and Mines Omialaja, in Udu local government area, 
after several years of its abandonment, was made possible due to the favorable investment climate created by the Okawa-led administration. I wish to formally commission this rolling mill, which has been put to a start today. I pray that God will bless this company and enable it to grow in the name of Jesus. It's a great achievement that this plant has been put back into action. Almost three years of our hard work. We took it over in February uh, 2015. And I think it's the team effort, Prashanta, led by uh, CEO Prashanta and all these people and all uh, my expat colleagues here who are uh, heading various functions. It's been a wonderful achievement. In keeping to, you know, the promise of His Excellency, it's been so wonderful in assisting uh, Premium Steel and Mines to see that this place comes uh, alive. Because he knows that once this place is up, a lot of jobs will be created. On behalf of Alaga community, we want to say thank you to Governor Koa for providing the enabling environment for Premium Steel to operate. We pray also to whatever assistance they may need from us, we are for them. The governor is working. You can see one of his smart agenda is to peace, job creation. And you can see this alone can tell you he's doing a whole lot so that people will be taken off the street and by so doing there will be a lot of jobs created and then where there is peace, I mean there is development. For the people of Udu and environs, the coming on stream of the steel complex which has defied past efforts by successive administrations is one that would continue to excite them for quite a long time. To the grassroots, there will be people who will be supplying pepper soup, who will be supplying cooked rice and all that around the corners. Because it's not everybody that is coming here that will come with a heavy food flask. So there will be plenty of activities. We are very much elated that the government is making some effort to revamp the place. The coming part of this thing is a welcome development because it will bring our youth from the street. Anything crime will be reduced and it will encourage productivity. This premium still coming to reopen now, it will enhance the empowerment of the youth of this very local government and the state as well because it will employ more than 1,000 youth. Due to the administration's favorable economic policy, an energy provider company has birthed in Ekrokwe, Ekrojegwe, Ugeli South local government area. The company has capacity to provide 400 megawatts of power. We like this as they want to come now. Free light, before we walk, it's a good development, I appreciate it. We will benefit well, well. We have been suffering in terms of NEMPA for over three years now. Some power don't even have light. With this project, short, you really south generally, they are going to benefit from it. We love uh, Okowa because since many governors don't go, don't go come. But Okowa do this thing for us. And we all in Nekrokwe, we support Okowa to go to the 2023. Community relations, which is key to promoting and encouraging investments to flourish, is not overlooked by the Okowa-led administration. In the series of Memoranda of Understanding MOU, the state government entered into, communities are carried along. The warm community relations which the administration has fostered in the new Delta has begun to rub off positively on some communities where the private sector operators are very active. In Sapole local government area, Seplat Petroleum Development Company has constructed roads which span several kilometers, solar-powered water supply scheme for the use of the host community, ultra-modern town hall with capacity for over 1,000 persons and housing scheme for the people. In oil producing companies partner with their communities and they are able to develop and produce the kind of infrastructure that we are seeing here today, then the job of government should be much lighter. We are part of you. You are a lucky government for us to do. We take pride in making sure that the communities where we operate benefit from our activities. Smart Delta. 
The new and improved investment climate in the state has propelled Rain Oil PLC to embark on expansion drive in the Delta and constructing roads to ease the movement of persons and goods in communities in Anyocha North local government area. This is in addition to opening of several sales outlets where Deltans are gainfully employed. I commission this Dr. Modern Moore and I wish to congratulate my brother Dr. Gabriel Quechi for this. Delta has been investment friendly. Uh, we've had support from the government in terms of giving us the necessary approvals in terms of getting the right location, uh, peace in the environment. So we found the uh, Delta are quite interesting to invest. The ease of doing business has positively impacted on the housing sector. The Delta State Government, in partnership with Sovereign Wealth, is constructing a massive housing estate along the Benin Asaba Expressway for the benefits of Deltans. This is without prejudice to the ILA Housing Estate Project. The State Commissioner for Housing, Architect Joseph Oge, speaks on why the housing sector in Delta State has caught the fancy of the private sector. We have to produce Delta State housing policy to be in line with the national housing policy, but peculiarity to Delta State. In Ibuzo, Oshimili North local government area, another giant step towards fulfilling Governor Kowa's desire for affordable housing for all Deltans is being championed by the private sector as a result of the conducive investment climate in the state. The more we are able to find a means of providing housing for our people, particularly low or medium cost housing that's affordable not only to the civil service class but also to all Nigerians, the better for our nation. The governor is a wonderful man, a dynamic man. He's, um, the man for the moment. He, he has a dream and I can see it's very vivid. Everybody sees it that uh, he's doing a great job in terms of uh, the housing and every other project that he's, uh, he has embarked on in Delta State. The governor is a performer. He's a miracle worker as I, I tell him to be. He's been doing wonderful work in the terms of um, housing and many other road construction. But this is one of his kind in the entire state. This estate is part of the robust housing policy of uh, Governor Kowa's administration. He has provided the enabling environment for private sector individuals to uh, put up this kind of estate. Welcome to Delta. My Delta, my Delta. Ah. Welcome to Delta. I am Delta, my Delta. Come live in Delta. Come invest in Delta. Come explore the potentials of our state. It better run, run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okoa is. They do it better. Run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okoa is. They do I see a job and work creation in Delta. Make the youth say them higher. Okoa. The hospitality industry subsector has attracted high-impact private sector investment as several world-class hotels and recreation centers have sprung up in most cities in the state. The upsurge is attributed to the flexible investment policy. The economy is improving. You can see the whole of Asaba today is uh, locked down. Uh, all hotels are fully booked. So. It's a wonderful development we are witnessing. We found out that in Delta State there's a lot of investment opportunities and then we can create some jobs opportunities here as well. This is a confidence builder for this uh, Chinese Mandarin to be here. It shows that uh, we are creating an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. We are happy to have a place like this where we can relax very comfortable place where you unwind after the stressful day. We need relaxation, we need recreation. The big question, however, is what did the okoa led administration do differently that has transformed Delta State into investment haven? The answer is not far-fetched. Aside sponsoring of bills to the Delta State House of Assembly that has legalized and boosted investment confidence, 
Critical infrastructure, which would woo investors into investing in the state, is also being attended to. The government has had impact on massive infrastructural development to attract investors to the state. I think he's done incredibly here. I knew and saw when Delta State came on board. Uh, it's incredible passing here from time to time to see what he's done in this place too. It's been a great work. No wonder his people said he must have a second term. Uh, coming into Asaba today and seeing some of the things I'm seeing, I'm very, very impressed with His Excellency uh, Governor Koa has done really well and the people of Delta should be very proud of their governor. Today, Delta State is unarguably a construction site as projects which have direct bearing on socio-economic development are being constructed all over the state. For instance, the administration's investment in roads construction has triggered a whole lot of economic activities in both urban and rural communities. Three and a half years ago, when Senator Ifa Yokowa came on the saddle, he promised Deltans that he will carry out massive infrastructural development, not just in our cities, in our riverine areas. Commercial activities have picked up tremendously since the dualization of this route, and traffic is more manageable now, especially with the installation of uh, traffic lights. And uh, the, at night, you want to come and see what goes on in this community. In the last three and a half years, the Okawa-led administration has constructed well over 317 roads that spans over 1,000 kilometers. These roads form part of the critical infrastructure that has made Delta State an investment haven. They told me they have a governor that is called Roadmaster. I didn't quite understand what they were talking about. Governor, you have given me a glimpse of it that truly you are a road master. And of course, to be a good road master, you must also be a bulldozer. Not just road, but priority roads. Roads that go to the hinterland, roads that go to the riverine areas, connecting the various communities, thereby giving Delta State one of the finest of networks, which has guaranteed the governor the road master. The multi-billion naira stormwater drainage project, which is aimed at addressing the flood menace in the state capital during the rainy season, is another smart investment in infrastructure that has made Delta State the new destination for both fund seekers and investors. The DLA Jesus Save Our Greek Road End, uh, actually we discovered that during this rain there was no flooding. The drain actually functioned very uh, properly and we're very happy with it. And that shows that uh, when it is fully completed, there'll be a flood control. The stormwater project in Asaba is a courageous project and having sat back and having assessed um, what it will take uh, is a sign of a man that has penchant for developmental projects. The massive investment in the Asaba International Airport as reflected in the runway which is one of the best in the country today and which has been upgraded to category C to accommodate Boeing 737 aircraft and its equivalent is a major boost to investors. It is indeed a reflection of a government that is genuinely committed to providing conducive investment environment. Uh, the runway I can say is amongst the top three in the country because it's quite new and it's very smooth. The airport has been upgraded back to the category six to receive Boeing 737. You recall that uh, about precisely 2015, it was downgraded, restricted to Dash 8Q400. And that's why you see Airpiece, Overland, and um, Aero coming in with uh, Dash 8Q400 category of aircraft. The good news came with the approval by the Director General of NCAA to upgrade airport back to that category 6. Now we can receive Boeing 737. The Okoa-led administration's decision to look in the direction of manpower 
and skill development through the massive infrastructure and curriculum upgrade in the six technical colleges and vocational centers is one of the major steps that have made Delta State an investment hub. Today, there are abundant skill workers who are well equipped to fill in the gap in our knowledge-based economy. More grace to Isabu. Since as being the governor of the state, we are all happy. So I'm voting for him to come back because he's the one that uplifted the image of technical and vocational school. If not, before now, the technical college was dying. He actually came to uplift it. So we thank him very much to continue doing the good job he's doing. And God should continue to bless him. Before now, we don't used to have it this way. But we thank God for our honorable governor, Dr. Ifan Yokowa for embracing tech care education. Like today, we're experiencing the M2 Tower training. We don't have it before. Children can now view after theoretical work, do not see it done practically and partake in it. So it's a very good development. The removal of bureaucratic bottlenecks in the acquisition of land through the setting up of Fast Track 90 for investors and genuine businessmen and women which makes it possible for one to get a CFO in 90 days has boosted investors' confidence in the state. To ensure that we don't keep anybody hanging, we develop a policy of land banks. For every part of the state, government now has land bank, which means if you come to me and say, I want land for housing in this local government, I will say, go there. We can give you CFO in maximum period of 90 days. The strengthening of the due process office and one-stop shop, which is designed to ensure that businesses and investments are carried out in a transparent manner, have instilled confidence in the investing public. When His Excellency um, Dr. Ifan Okoa came in in 2015, he reached out in a far-reaching um, uh, institutional and legal and regulatory um, uh, policies. That's the reason why in 2016 this law, public procurement uh, law, came in, into effect. He did that to bring efficiency, compliance, transparency, probity, and prudence in doing government business in Delta State. This is just evident that the climate is very conducive for people to come. That agency that is set up is to make it easy for anybody who wants to come to invest in Delta to have a one-stop shop where you can gather all the information you need and also process what you want to do and be given a quick attention. And now we're beginning to enjoy that in Delta State. The presence of the multi-billion Naira Stephen Keshi Stadium, which has hosted major international and local events with high spectators presence, has demonstrated the resolve of the Okawa-led administration to bequeath a Delta state that works for the people. After the Senior African Athletics Championship tagged Asaba 2018, the Super Eagles and Uganda International Friendly was played at the Stephen Keshi Stadium. This is in addition to the Kano Pillars Enugu Rangers ITO Cup Final. <laughs>